Hello everybody. This is our exam booster series of videos. Today's video is on dictionaries and grammar books. You can use this video to prepare for net, gate and set exams. So are you ready? First we talk about dictionaries. What are the earliest dictionaries? Do you know that? Apollonius, the sophist, a famous grammarian who probably lived in the first century, second century, third century. He wrote a Homeric lexicon. It is not clear in exactly which year he wrote it or even which century. But this is from the early uh, period, the late BCs it is. And the only work of this kind that exists today. And this is like a glossary. This is a lexicon means dictionary. And uh, the next is Robert Estienne's Dictionarium Su Lingue Latine Thesaurus. You will think, Are, kya hai? this is not important. But listen to me, Robert Estienne and Henry Estienne, his son, they were very important grammarians. This Robert Estienne is sometimes called Robertus Stephanus. He wrote, this is 16th century, okay, 1532, 1572. They were printers in Paris. That is why they wrote in uh, French. These are Latin dictionaries by Robert Estienne and uh, Henry Estienne. These people laid the foundations of Latin lexicography. Will you remember that? Even if you don't remember, it is okay. Just hear it. Because the ones that you should remember are coming. Now, Charles du Fresne du Kang. I don't know how it is pronounced. Maybe that is how. We also call him Charles du Fresne. Charles du Fresne. He is a very famous, distinguished French philologist. He is from the uh, early modern period, 1678. He studied the Middle Ages. Okay, It was the Middle Ages that he studied. And he also wrote a very famous dictionary of the medieval period in Latin. Monumental dictionary of medieval Latin it is. Nathan Bailey, have you heard of him? He wrote a dictionary in 1721. Well, he was from England, you know from the name, isn't it? Nathan Bailey. He was the author of several dictionaries. And universal etymological dictionary he brought out. That is also called Nathan Bailey's dictionary. Did you know Samuel Johnson based his dictionary on Nathan Bailey's dictionary also? So many books have been inspired by Nathan Bailey's dictionary, including Johnson's dictionary. Johnson's dictionary, as you might know, came in uh, 1755 on April 15. That is the date in which it was published. Johnson did not like any of the existing dictionaries, so he wrote... The very famous dictionary of the English language. And that was the preeminent dictionary until Oxford Dictionary came in the 20th century. Johnson's Dictionary has a lot of very witty uh, definitions. Now the 19th century dictionaries. Very prominent is Webster's American Dictionary of the English Language. Noah Webster, that was the name of the man. He was an American uh, lexicographer and Noah Webster's American Dictionary of the English Language, uh, International Dictionary, Miriam Webster's Dictionary is a descendant of this Webster's Dictionary. 1828 was uh, one of the years of its publication. Actually, it was done over a long period. His first dictionary was not this. His first dictionary, Webster's first dictionary, that came in 1806. Can I tell you the title? A Compendious Dictionary of the English Language. Now, Webster was a very prominent figure in spelling reform. Okay? Spelling reform was spearheaded by Webster. Okay, then there is Ebenezer Brewer's Dictionary of Phrase and Fable. That is a very famous book. A Guide to the Scientific Knowledge of Things Familiar. Uh, Brewer's Dictionary of Phrase and Fable. You know, these are all by Brewer. Brewer's Phrase and Fable is uh, a very prominent work 
that came in the 19th century, 1870. And uh, this book became a foundation for modern English language. The Chambers Dictionary came in 1872. William and Robert Chambers, they were the publishers. Chambers English Dictionary, it is called 1872. It was an expanded version of the earlier Chambers Etymological Dictionary. Another was there, Chambers Etymological Dictionary. And this Chambers Dictionary was very popularly used by crossword players, scrabble players, etc. Now guys, have you heard of a New English Dictionary on Historical Principles? New English Dictionary on Historical Principles, edited by James Murray, Dr. Henry Bradley, Sir William Craigie and Dr. C.T. Onions. They are very important lexicologists. Now the 20th century dictionaries. Webster's New International Dictionary came in 1934 and then in 1961. New International Dictionary is very famous. New International Dictionary is, uh, you know, the development of the earlier Webster's Dictionary. Eric Partridge. Have you heard of Eric Partridge? A dictionary of slang and unconventional English. Uh, a dictionary of slang and unconventional English. That is uh, by Eric Partridge. It's a dictionary uh, made on slang or colloquial usages. That is very different, isn't it? That is something very new. He published seven editions of this hugely influential dictionary. And later when Oxford Dictionary came, only all these dictionaries went a little out of fashion. Until then, they were very famous. A Dictionary of American English on Historical Principles. It is called DAE. <clears throat> it is a dictionary of terms uh, used in United States and uh, it was published by the University of Chicago Press edited by Craigie and Hulbert. The Oxford Dictionary of English Etymology came in 1966 published by Oxford University Press of course edited by C.T. Onions, Dr. Charles Talbot Onions. That was a very big dictionary as well. And then there is the American Heritage Dictionary on the English language. Heritage Dictionary of the English language, sorry. It was published by Houghton Mifflin and it, the first edition came in 1969. So that is also important, American Heritage Dictionary of the English language. Please remember these titles because it could be important. And then Oxford English Dictionary online came. Oxford English Dictionary was a very prominent work that came uh, from the Oxford University Press, uh, first fully published in 1928. That uh, underwent several editions, electronic edition, everything. Finally, in 2000, uh, the first electronic version of the dictionary was made widely available. Did you understand? Next, we are going into grammar books. Are you interested in grammar? Let me tell you about it. Ailfric of Einsham. Oh, he's an old English writer. He was the first writer in England to produce a grammar book. Ailfric's grammar, it is called in about year 998. It is, of course, written in Old English, but it explains Latin. There was no textbook before that in English, I think. This was the first known textbook in English. And it is all based on Latin, of course. Now, guys, you should understand that uh, the early textbooks of grammar were not very, very important. Even though I have put one slide here, it was from the 18th century that grammar books became really important. The first English textbook was integrated into the classroom curriculum in as early as 1532, that is 16th century. William Lilly's Latin grammar, Rudimenda Grammaticus, that came in 1534. Now in the 19th century, English grammars became very prominent. Why? Because from the 18th century, English grammars had started appearing. Sentence construction became uh, very 
prominent. It, it changed in the 18th century. Complex sentences uh, began to be formed and written. So, spelling was standardized. For, so, for all these reasons, grammars became very important. Okay? And a very important book is Samuel Houston's The Essence of English Grammar that came in 1817. It was one of the first grammar books in the U.S., and for the first grammar book to actually talk about grammatical construction. And it is said that this book reveals a lot about American culture. It highlights the complexities of education, uh, intellectual quality, intellectual equality in America. All these are uh, suggested by this book, Samuel Houston's, The Essence of English Grammar. Grammar and logic in the 19th century as seen in a syntactical analysis of the English language. That was published by J.W.F. Rogers in 1883. Grammar and Logic in the 19th Century. It is also a seminal work. Now, a short historical English grammar by Henry Sweet. A new English grammar, logical and historical by Henry Sweet. Who is this Henry Sweet? He was a, an English philologist and grammarian. He did a lot of contributions to uh, phonetics and teaching of languages. Uh, and uh, he was also a very prominent intellectual of that time. He really uh, changed the way in which language was studied and taught. He has also written a handbook of phonetics, phonology, phonetics. That is also important uh, in Henry Sweet's oeuvre. And then comes Renan Martin. English grammar textbooks written by Wren and Martin were very, very famous. P.C. Wren and H. Martin. It was primarily written for the children of British uh, officers who were living in India. In the time of British Raj, in India, Pakistan, etc., there were many children of the British. So, Wren and Martin published their book. It was first published in 1935. It is not one book, they produced a series of books. When you talk about grammar, Noam Chomsky is very important. Noam Chomsky's syntactic structures that came in 1957 was a revolution. As you might know, Chomsky argued that human mind contains a certain uh, set of rules, etc. that organize language. It is called universal grammar. The set of rules hardwired into your brain. So, uh, that means that uh, people acquire language based on these rules. Uh, language acquisition changed because of Chomsky's understanding of these structures. Now, Chomsky's theories of grammar, as you might know, are often called transformational and generative. Generative, transformational, and together we say transformational generative. You know, this is a term that comes from mathematics. Generative means... Uh, formally explicit. You can clearly see how it is derived. That is the meaning. In the case of language, what does generative mean? It means the capacity to produce uh, an infinite number of uh, grammatical phrases and sentences. You know, from a basic structure, you can create a kernel structure. You can create infinite number of sentences and utterances. That is the meaning of transformational generative. A Comprehensive Grammar of the English Language by Randolph Quirk, Sidney Greenbaum, Jeffrey Lees. They're all very major linguists. Jan Swarthwick, all, this, all these people together wrote it in 1985. And then in 2003 came a, an amazing book, Eats, Shoots and Leaves. You know, that is a very uh, interesting book about grammar and punctuation written by Lynn Truss. It is subtitled, The Zero Tolerance Approach to Punctuation. Okay, so this is very uh, famous and important. You should even possess a copy of this. I hope you have enjoyed this video, guys. This was a brief introduction to dictionaries and grammars. You can watch the video again and uh, study all these books because you might get a question based on them in the exams. Thank you. Bye-bye.